Hey guys, so this video is going to be a little less fun for me because I've been dealing with some printer issues. And to be perfectly honest with all of you, I'm not really the kind of person that likes tinkering with broken gadgets. I want to be free of this pain. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. So all this started because I was trying to print a second option for my jewelry box lid for the previous video. While I was printing it, my printer suddenly did an emergency stop with a loud beeping sound. The error message on the screen read, M112 called emergency stop. So I looked at the Octoprint web interface and the error message that it displayed was hot end thermal runaway. So I then decided that I was going to print from the SD card instead of Octoprint to see if the printer would do its own emergency stop and display the thermal runaway error message. So interestingly, the printer stopped at the same level as the previous failed print, at almost the exact same point. And I think the level that it stopped at each time was level 4. So whenever the printer reaches level 4 of this G-code file, it starts printing fast, the front fan starts spinning very quickly, and the temperature of the hot end starts to go down gradually. And the temperature goes down until it calls for an emergency stop and displays the thermal error runaway message. So Prusa's help website has an article titled Thermal Runaway i3 Series that helps you identify and fix thermal runaway related issues. I'll add a link to that in the description. So you might be wondering, what is Thermal Runaway? According to Prusa's article, Thermal Runaway is a safety feature designed to cut power to the heaters in case of a thermistor malfunction. A thermistor is what is responsible for measuring the temperature of a printer's hot end or heat bed. And in this Prusa printer, you get two kinds of thermistor, a hot end thermistor and a heat bed thermistor. So I followed the article's instruction and took the following steps in order to pinpoint my problem. So I haven't recently reassembled my hot end, but I did about a month ago replace the nozzle. So just to be sure, I went through the how-to guide to make sure that my hot end was still assembled correctly. So as soon as I got to step 2, I genuinely thought that it wasn't cold enough to warrant me having to check the ambient temperature in the room. But in hindsight, it definitely seems like that's a definite contributing factor to why I had the issue, which I will discuss in more detail later. I visually checked my thermistor to make sure that it was securely and correctly inserted into the heater block. Moved the whole extruder left and right at full length of the x-axis and wiggled the cable wrap behind it to see whether there are any fluctuations in the temperature readings, and there were none. Check the thermistor cable connector on the NC Rambo, reseated the connector to be extra sure. And finally, I checked the fan shroud for any kind of damage, and there was none. So since I couldn't find any faulty or damaged hardware, I decided that I would try printing the Benchy G-code file that came with the printer on the SD card because I had the sneaking suspicion that perhaps it wasn't the printer hardware that was at fault, but rather the G-code file that I was trying to print. 
And other than some stringing, which is probably because of moisture in the PLA, the Benchy file printed out perfectly. So then I decided to see what would happen if I generated and printed a new G-code file for lid option 2. So when I generated the new G-code, I selected 0.2 millimeters quality, whereas in the previous G-code file I had selected 0.2 millimeters speed. So I monitored the printer while I was printing out the new G-code file that I had generated and the temperature didn't seem to go down as much as the previous G-code file that failed. I think the most that the temperature went down was probably 5 degrees Celsius. Meaning that perhaps the speed of the printing contributed to the fluctuation of the hot end temperature. And I also figured for posterity's sake, since I already checked all the hardware and reinserted the thermistor cable into the circuit board, that I would try printing the old G-code file that failed before. And to my frustration and surprise, it printed like it came out well without any error messages. But I did notice something. When it reaches level four, the temperature does still go down considerably, but this time it didn't go down enough to call like an emergency stop thermal runaway error. And then I remembered that the day that I had the first thermal runaway issue was a lot colder than the day that the print didn't fail. And then after rereading the article, I noticed that the ambient temperature that they suggest is 16 degrees Celsius or more. So I think what happened was on the cold day, the printer's hot end wasn't able to stay hot enough while the front fan was cooling down. And then the printer's hot end temperature went down to 198 degrees Celsius. And then the printer had to have an emergency stop because of a thermal runaway problem. But then on a hot day, the ambient temperature in the room is warm enough to allow the printer's hot end to keep up with the cooling down process of the front fan. So when the printer failed, the hot end went down to 198 degrees Celsius, whereas when it passed, the hot end only went down to 201 degrees Celsius, which is still pretty low, but high enough for the printer to be able to continue printing. Other factors that I'd like to mention that might be coming into play is that I updated my printer's firmware to version 3.12.2 about a month ago. The place where I store my printer is inside our apartment, nowhere near a window or door, meaning that the chances of a draft having caused the thermal runaway issue are very unlikely. I keep my printer partially encased. There were no fans, heaters or air conditioners on the day I had the first thermal runaway error. So in summary, I couldn't find any hardware issues. A contributing factor seems to be the print speed setting. The reason why I say this is because the temperature fluctuation of the G-code file set to quality was a lot less than the temperature fluctuation of the G-code file set to speed. Cold weather caused the G-code file set to 0.2 mm speed to fail. I know what the outdoor temperature was that day, but I have no idea what the indoor temperature was. And finally, there could be other contributing factors causing this issue. I'm kind of a 3D printing noob, so any of you 3D printer OGs out there, please let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, at least I was able to finally print the second lid option for my jewelry box. I kind of like it more than the other one, but you guys let me know which one you prefer. Anyway guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed watching this video even though it's ending on a more ambiguous note. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!